This class uh, is about an introduction to operations management. It's one in a series of talks on uh, operations management and introducing the topic. It will specifically look at modern trends in operations management, look at ideas and concepts and models and so on that are currently talked about in the literature relating to operations management. So we can start by looking at the trends in business. Well some of the major trends involve issues such as the internet, e-commerce and e-business. Now the full impact of these has still not been felt I think in, in the commercial world. They are now major players in the commercial life of the country but they're still in, in a, a state of development. Having said that, they will probably always be in a state of development. The internet is evolving and it's involving, evolving continuously. Uh, opportunities for e-business are constantly evolving as well. So the day-to-day the -day processes of business accountancy, marketing, um, the, the facilities that make businesses po uh, possible, these are largely reliant on information that can be downloaded and checked online and communication systems are based on the internet and and so on. And production itself is now more and more thought of in terms of uh, outsourcing and uh, get it, getting the, the work done off-site. So <clears throat> the internet and the facilities of electronic communications are more widely used and relied upon. So <clears throat> that is a major trend in what's happening and businesses have changed immensely as a consequence of the internet and e-commerce, e-business and so on. These are dealt with in separate videos elsewhere in the course. Management technology is changing. It's not just uh, the internet but there's more use of facilities like barcode readers in, in stores. Um, the uh, facilities that management have in terms of uh, being able to compute accurately figures and run what-if scenarios using let's say spreadsheets. These are a lot different. When ideas need to be discussed they may be discussed using PowerPoint or one of the other presentation packages and in that way the message is more clearly delivered. So management technology is changing and of course there's globalization. Um, the developed world has, in a sense, got rid of its production facilities to the developing world. Labour is cheaper, overheads are cheaper, and in this way costs are, are reduced. So the process of globalisation, which has been running now for, for many years, is likely to continue. Uh, there may not be such a big drive in some countries where their indigenous industries will start to take off and will start to compete against the uh, the globalized firms. But having said that, uh, it's it's a major trend and operations management uh, needs to to look into this to see where best the operations can be be placed. There's also supply chain. There's a lot of discussion in the literature about supply chains how to efficiently integrate supply chains and how to coordinate and facilitate the whole supply from raw materials right down to the finished product suitable to meet the needs of the customer and how to deliver the product efficiently and consistently. So there's a lot in work on operations management related to the supply chain and agility as it's called or if you like flexibility 
the ability to be able to switch over from one type of production to another type. I'll talk more about this later in this uh, in this class. I'll talk about agility uh, later and also supply chains. So that's uh, that's coming up in this class. Now, more recent trends. Well, worker involvement in industry. Uh, there's now greater recognition that the workers have a contribution to make, not just their labour, but their opinions, their ideas, and wider consultation amongst the workforce is seen, is seen as a way of uh, fostering not just good industrial relations and commercial relations, but a, a good way of innovating the product and, and staying in touch with what the, consumer, the wider consumers want. The workforce can bring ideas in and they bring them in at all levels and their ideas are worth looking into. So again, regular meetings with the, the workers uh, on a whole range of issues and topics are worthwhile exercises. But we also have trends, modern trends, looking at the environment. Uh, issues about pollution and greenhouse gases and uh, global warming. These are major problems facing mankind and companies need to have green agendas, they need to have efficient agendas, using energy efficiently. And it's not just a, a part of them projecting uh, uh, a green image to the wider public and thereby building up good uh, public relations but it's it's also a, an issue of being green because it's the right thing to do it's an ethical position and technologies that are emerging are incorporating uh, efficient running and efficient uh, usage in a way that minimizes the impact on the environment. There are still, however, areas where it's difficult to to save the full impact on the environment. For example, um, coal burning power stations. Switching over from a coal burning power station to, let's say, a nuclear one uh, is costly. It's expensive and costly and many countries can't afford. So there are green issues, uh, environmental issues that need to be addressed. What happens to the waste of the, the business? Where does the waste go? How does it dispose of its waste? Um, many issues involved. And also there, there's the drive to develop the service economy. In the West, in the developed world, there's a greater movement towards service-based industries and manufacturing is going overseas to the less developed world. So the uh, in a way it, it relates to point number two on the environment. Uh, the developed world seem to be greener and the underdeveloped world the polluters. Of course that's a very unfair uh, thing to say because in fact what's happened is the production facilities are moving from the developed to the underdeveloped so quite naturally the underdeveloped world are, pollu are, are producing more greenhouse gases and more using more energy and so on but there is a movement towards a service economy in the west and that's a, a big trend so where uh, companies may now rely solely on globalized uh, facilities look at producers overseas import the goods and and sell the goods as opposed to in the past making the goods and then selling the goods so there is a, a movement towards services of course e-business which is growing in importance and now statistics show that online sales can outstrip the high street sales um, by a considerable margin and that that whole process is likely to continue 
particularly as security in e-business is strengthened and uh, the facilities of the e-business seller uh, are improved. For example, uh, better use of graphics, of uh, involving the customer in, in terms of the usage of the site, the, re the user is able to manipulate the site in a way that gives the user uh, a better perspective of the product and there's more security perhaps in the use of credit cards online. So e-business is not something that's going to go away, it's a, it's a major trend and I say it's recent, it's relatively recent. Uh, supply chain management is something which uh, has been around for a long time but at the same time it's it's relatively new, it's a bit like e-business. Um, looking at the whole supply chain and looking at the subsystems, the, the different parts of the supply chain, trying to get efficiency into each part and trying to get good linkage between one part of the supply chain and the next so that there is an efficient movement of goods from start to finish. So looking at the whole supply chain, looking at the suppliers, the transport networks and so on, production and so on, getting all of it linked and getting it linked efficiently. And that in itself is a relatively new trend, uh, probably kicked off properly in the 1980s. And I say it's recent, it's recent given um, the whole history of industry, modern industry since the Industrial Revolution and uh, the 1980s is relatively recent. Total quality management, another concept that uh, is widely used and, and talked about in the context of operations management, uh, mostly developed by Japan and adopted by many producers in the West the idea of having quality right throughout the production process, not just at the end, not just inspecting the products at the end. Because if a, an error arises at the, the first stage in production, then the whole batch of production may be lost. Uh, all the efforts expended on uh, machines, uh, setting up machines, training workers, all of that would be lost if that product was to get to the end. So total quality is checking it right throughout the system. And the emphasis on quality is uh, now quite a big topic in the context of operations management. And globalization, as we said before. Um, we have all sorts of trading blocks. The North American free trade area, <clears throat> we have the European Union, uh, we have the ASEAN group of countries, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations um, in, the, in the East. So there tends to be a movement towards trading blocks and what we have is the outsourcing of certain parts of production to the less developed world from these major blocks and this, these major trading blocks start to trade amongst themselves so we we have all sorts of complexity in trade but what seems to come out of the figures overwhelmingly is that there has been a major shift from pro producing, manufacturing domestically to outsourcing it to uh, underdeveloped or developing countries and let them make the product, let them produce it and then it's exported from them back to where it was set up in the first place. So that is an ongoing process. Um, it's likely at some stage that the underdeveloped countries, the, the developing countries where this uh, globalization has occurred, places like for example China, will start to develop its own markets very rapidly. Uh, there will be internal markets so that eventually 
China will uh, not be as attractive for globalization purposes. Uh, it'll also find its costs rising as uh, facilities are become scarce, uh, as key workers become scarce and so on. Um, costs will start to rise in a place like China, so we'll start to find outsourcing to other countries. And perhaps this is the way we we spread industrialization. Maybe this is the model for spreading industrialization. We also talk about lean production. Lean production in the sense of uh, very efficient production. Cutting out anything which is wasteful. Any activity which does not add value is cut off. And that's quite a big topic in operations management and one which will have to be dealt with in more detail elsewhere. So the other important trends, well there is a, a greater emphasis on ethical behaviour, um, making sure that the products are safe, they are uh, in accordance with the requirements of the market in terms of safety, durability, that they have uh, good cre green credentials. They're, they've been made from recycled materials or they are produced in an efficient manner. And that the company itself is ethical in, in its behaviour towards its workforce and towards the customer. So there's more talk about ethical behaviour nowadays. Operations strategy, which overlaps with the ethical behaviour, but operations strategy, uh, there's a lot of a lot of talk about what the ideal operations strategy is, and it's really selection or selecting from the previous set of slides, uh, looking at, for example, agile production, lean production, looking at supply chain, looking at quality issues, and uh, but it's it's selecting from amongst those. And the whole idea of working with fewer resources, uh, outsourcing for example, may mean that production no longer takes place within the business. Production may take place the other side of the world. So there are fewer resources apparently within the business. Um, so the business is able to focus on certain functions, for example on marketing or the business is able to focus in on research and development but get the products made elsewhere. There's greater emphasis also on cost control and productivity. Um, this is partly driven by what we know happens in the developing world where very efficient production units are set up. So domestic producers must control costs and must show high levels of productivity if they are to compete with the globalised sector. As I said earlier, there is a lot of emphasis on quality and on process improvement. Uh, it is now imperative that operations management constantly review processes within the business to see if new and more efficient ways of doing things, of, of delivering the product, if new ways can be found which are more efficient. So process uh, improvement is on the agenda. It's a, a recurring theme right throughout the, the literature on op uh, operations management. Process improvement, innovation in the way the, the business is structured, the type of machinery, the type of processes, the training that the workers receive, the layout, all of these issues are now discussed on a almost continuous basis within the literature on operations management. And as, as I said also, greater emphasis on quality and the the need for quality right throughout the production process, from the quality of the raw materials to the quality of the final product. There is also increased regulation and product liability. 
consumer groups have been instrumental in making sure that producers are producing products which uh, are, are safe to use, that they, they meet certain standards and that they are they represent value for money in the sense that they are safe to meet these standards uh, they're durable, they're good quality and the whole reputation of the business is at stake in terms of the product if the business does make shoddy uh, work uh, shoddy products then the image of the business can be destroyed but also the business could lay itself open uh, to legal challenge if uh, a product uh, does not work as as required and as as stated and in fact if the product was to hurt someone hurt uh, the customer then there may be liability uh, issues and court cases and so on so there is product liability and as I said earlier lean production um, trying to get the most out of as little as possible but also cutting out anything which is not absolutely necessary any process which does not add value or significant value may be reduced or cut out completely now let's have a few words about uh, some of these terms just to finish off this talk um, let's for a start look at this idea of agile agile manufacturing or which is equal to lean manufacturing now it provides flexibility to switch quickly and economically from one product design to another with little disruption um, so it leads to faster response to changes in customer demand so because it, the company can switch from one type of product design to another very quickly uh, it's very agile it, it can shift the production very quickly from making product X to making product Y and that means it's able to keep up with changing customer demand as customers look for new products look for um, new designs the company is able to quickly switch over it's it's agile uh, a sophisticated computerized inventory control system allows the plant to keep track of large number of parts so it it's agile because it has the information but also it is uh, captured uh, all the relevant information electronically so that the managers can see very quickly what they've got and what they can do they can see where there is slack in the system they can see what they've got in stock the information is readily available to management so they're able to switch over very quickly from one type of work to another now the essential features of agile manufacturing are to reduce inventories cut the stocks down to the bare minimum recognizing the fact that suppliers may be unreliable some suppliers may disappoint the the purchasing section by making late deliveries or or whatever but try to reduce inventories cash tied up in inventories is is idle it's not doing anything it could be better used elsewhere in the business the danger with having very low levels of stock is that the company runs out it runs out of stock for production and if it does it's called a stock out if there's a stock out it means the whole plant could stand idle waiting for deliveries to arrive now that's a complete waste of all the resources of the business so there's a fear of stock out so companies tend to hold some level of stock just just in case it's it's a it's a precaution but having said that inventories should be kept to the minimum 
bearing in mind to want to avoid the possibility of a stock out. Reduction in turnaround times. It's important that the agile production system, manufacturing system, is able to switch around from one type of production to another and they're able to do it very fast. They're able to switch over from producing product X to product Y and they're able to do it very quickly. It's uh, the machines have been designed in a way that allows them to turn turn into a different process to, to be able to work in a different way very quickly changing some parts very swiftly um, so it's a part of the design of the plant and the layout of the plant that enables the plant to switch over from one type of production to another when the need arises and it's very quick turnaround um, agile production is also facilitated by automation and the use of computers and that sort of machinery where very precise tolerances can be fed into the computer and the machines will obey the, the computers and work through those tolerances and should a different product be needed um, perhaps a different program is entered and that's it, the machine is then set up to do a different task completely. So the advent of automated flexible machinery and computerized control of machinery enables flexible manufacturing to take place. It's essential for agile manufacturers to have access to quick information and the ability to process the information very fast so again the use of computers greatly facilitates this information is picked up it's fed back to the computer um, it could be fed back wirelessly from a handheld device back to the computer the computer immediately analyzes it and gives the information to the manager who can then make a decision so uh, the analysis and the uh, collation of the data can be done electronically and that facilitates agile manufacture. Now let's also look at a simple supply chain situation. It's one I mentioned earlier but just to round off this class these couple of topics are put on to the end so agile production and uh, the supply chain. Well for a start the supply chain is just a sequence of activities and organizations involved in producing and delivering a good or service. It's a sequence of activities. It's a sequence of activities or if you like a sequence of activities and organizations. And they're all linked because they are producing a particular good or service. So it starts with perhaps the supplier's supplies or the suppliers suppliers uh, so a company um, receives raw materials from a supplier well the supplier will have received those raw materials from someone else and they will also use the facilities of a transport company and so on so the supply chain can start right back it can start with the ore from which the metal was made. It could start that far back but generally speaking we tend to cut it off somewhere around the direct suppliers. So we say uh, the supply chain to the business starts with the suppliers. We don't normally start with the suppliers suppliers because it's it's too far back and most companies don't have that sort of information anyway but I only put it there to say that in fact we can extend the supply chain all the way back to the very start but we would let's say look at the direct suppliers perhaps suppliers of raw material to the business so the direct suppliers feed the raw material or deliver the raw material to the producer. Um, the producer makes the product and passes it to a distributor. 
and the distributor passes it on to the final customer and that's the supply chain it's essential that all the parts of the supply chain run smoothly right from raw materials or certain services certain basic services perhaps right through to the final customer who gets the product or the service that he or she wanted and it's good quality so the as I said here in this particular slide we could have started the supply chain much earlier but uh, generally speaking we would have uh, started with direct suppliers, producer, distributor and finish it with final consumer. That's near enough. So that's our talk about the supply chain, agile production and looking at some of the modern issues, the current issues in operations management. And that's all I'm going to do in this session. I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.